If your washer is displaying an OE error code and it's made by LG, it's because the washer is trying to discharge the water, but it's not successful in doing so. This could be one of three things. Either A, your filter is clogged, B, your drain hose is kinked or clogged, or C, your drain pump is bad. The first two things we could check pretty easily, but the third one is a water pump replacement, which is also a pretty easy repair, and we could do most of that work with a Phillips screwdriver. Let's start with the easy stuff first. First, get a towel on the ground because there's gonna be some water. If your washer is really full of water, you're gonna wanna take advantage of this drain tube that they supply here. What you do is you pull this plug out and what little bit of water or a lot of water will come out uh, in a very controlled fashion. You might wanna get like a tray or something to uh, get the water to completely drain out. You're gonna need to drain the washer before you could do any type of serious repair. Once you've drained all the water out, the next thing you're gonna wanna check is this drain filter. Simply unscrew it and remove it. If it's clean like this one, then you know your problem is elsewhere. The last thing to check is the drain hose. Now LG makes like a hard plastic corrugated drain hose so they don't kink very easy. And this is likely not your problem. So by checking those two things, we've all but guaranteed that the water pump is the problem. Now I recommend replacing the water pump with a genuine LG product. They happen to be very good quality and they tend to last a little bit longer than the aftermarket ones. I'll put a link in the description. You can buy it directly from my website at lorenefurniture.com. Let's start taking this machine apart. The first step and the only two screws that you have to access from the back are these two screws right here. There's one on the left and there's one on the right. Make sure you pull the bottom screws out and not the top ones because we're trying to release the top. Once you remove the top screws, you're gonna wanna push back on the top. Once you get this gap right here, you just wanna give it another little push and the top should just lift right off. Next, remove the detergent drawer. There's gonna be a little blue tab right at the top here that you could push and then you can remove the drawer completely. Hidden behind the drawer are two Phillips screws. Let's remove those. And on the right side of the cabinet, there's gonna be one screw that was hidden by the top. We have to remove that also. The next step is to remove the front display panel. And to remove that, you kind of have to just kind of pry on the plastic a little bit. There's little tabs that hold this entire cover in place. If you can't get it with your hands, you might want to get a flathead screwdriver to help you out. You could just kind of get your screwdriver underneath there and just give it a little pry. But be careful because it is made out of plastic. Once you release enough tabs, the whole cover should just come out nice and easy. There's two or three or one harness, depending on what model your machine is. They're right back here. Just simply push the tabs in and you should be able to release the clips. Now this cover is released, let's move it to the side. The next is we're gonna remove, there's five screws here, but we're only gonna remove four of them right now because we wanna remove this front cover with as much control as possible. Open the washer door and you have to remove these two screws that are holding the, the latch in place. Now with your flathead screwdriver, we have to remove this bellow spring. What you wanna do is take a flathead, get it underneath the spring, and just kinda of give it a pull like that. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to take the door bellow off of the frame and just kind of tuck it on the inside so it doesn't hold up the front cover. Next, we're gonna to go to the drain where the filter was. We're gonna simply remove this cover and there's a Phillips screw here. Your washer might have another screw at the top, so just check it out. To remove this, you just pry on the left or right hand side and just pull it out of the way. You'll find one more screw right there that you have to remove. It's really important. The cover won't come off without it. Now that we have everything removed, we're gonna take this last screw out, but be careful because this top or this front cover is gonna wanna come towards you. So put your knee gently against it. Remove the last screw and then the front cover is just gonna lean forward. If there's a clip holding the door latch on, we have to remove that. And then we can just lift a little and move the whole front cover off to the side. In the bottom left-hand corner, you're gonna see the drain pump assembly. Now in some washers, there's gonna be a pump on the left and a pump on the right. Usually the pump on the right is a recirculating pump and that's not your issue. The issue is your drain pump. It's usually on the left. The drain hose is closest to it. We have to remove this entire pump assembly and then we could take it out, replace the motor, and then reinstall it. First, we're gonna take these two screws out. 
there's some models directly below the large drain hose you're gonna feel like a tab this is the tab that I'm telling you about the pump slides in between these two tracks and this is just a spring tab holding it together it's directly below the tub to pump hose push down on that tab and then you could push the pump the rest of the way back and now it's basically released. We're gonna grab a pair of pliers and we're gonna remove these two hoses and then we're gonna disconnect the wires. Now that we have that disconnected, our last part is gonna be the wires. We'll take it off of this mount, slide it off of this, and then simply unplug them. With the pump on the ground, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these three screws that are holding the actual pump motor to the pump housing. Make sure you pay attention to which way the drain pump is clocked. As you can see, if this is the filter facing forward, this pump is kind of around the four or five o'clock uh, area. So we gotta make sure we put it back in the same spot. Just give the pump a little wiggle and it'll pop right out. We do have to remove this cover and to remove it, you just kinda wanna lift and it should slide right out. Now move the old pump to the side. The new pump goes in the same way should just snap in very minimal effort now make sure you're at least somewhat clean over here because there is a gasket that rides here so just give it a quick wipe with a towel set your pump housing up and we're going to put this back at around four or five o'clock now we have to put the screws kind of exactly where we took them out of don't torque these down too much because you'll strip the plastic if you forgot where the screws go look at your old drain pump you'll see there's dents where your screws were. This, there was no screw. This, there was a screw. This one was covered by that white plastic. And then this has got a dent and this does not. So we're gonna put the screws exactly where we found them. Now our pump is finished, we're ready to put it back in. Get the new pump into position, noting how you have this track and we have to slide that into there. Before you get it to in place, get your drain pump wire and get it plugged back in. You'll kind of know where the wire is supposed to get clipped in. It's got electrical tape or some sort of protection around it where it clips in in each spot. So you'll know how much wire to pull through. The next is we're gonna get our thing on the track and then we're just gonna slide it forward. Next, we're gonna put our Phillips screws here in the front just to kind of mount the pump in place. You wanna make sure that your little drain tube assembly makes its way back through this little hole here. Assembly is the reverse of disassembly. Just take your time and don't forget any outlets or plugs or anything like that. So one little trick you're probably having a hard time getting this door boot spring back on. You wanna make sure that the front gasket, it should sit inside of a little groove on the front cabinet. So you kinda of wanna make sure you tuck it behind that, then it should basically stay in place. What you wanna do is you wanna get your spring towards the bottom here. Get the left side of the spring as far around as you can. It'll usually get you to about right here. Now what I do afterwards, is I'll grab a flathead screwdriver and I will simply pry it until I could get it around the door boot. Because this is rubber, it's gonna act as your third hand. It's gonna hold this clamp in place. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab a screwdriver that's thin enough to pass through this hole and you basically wanna pull and you wanna extend the spring. Now while this spring is being extended, you wanna have your other hand right up top here to try and get this spring into its groove. and then let the spring go, and that's it. It's easy as pie. If you wanna check your work, you could put this washer into self-test mode. It's usually soil level and spin speed, so you'll hold these two buttons and then press the power button. On this particular model, it's the wash and spin speed. So you just press and hold these two buttons and press the power button. It'll give you two dings and it'll give you this crazy jargon. And how you advance through the cycle is you just keep pressing the start button. That's the drain pump, and it's the clockwise uh, agitation. This is the low spin, so this should get up to 500 or so RPMs. If you press it one more time, it'll go into high spin. 
the next four presses are going to be the uh, various inlet valves. There's three cold and one hot. This is the first one, second, third, fourth. This is the counterclockwise. This is the heater check. This will only throw a code if the heater is bad. This is the drain sequence. This is what we're looking for. And yay, it's draining. The next button will shut it off. And congratulations, you just saved yourself $300.